Good morning. This morning I want to introduce you to the idea of uh, some decimal concepts. And as I thought about the course, I thought, well, why is it that we put decimals right after fractions? And the reason for that is because really a decimal is a fraction. Um, any decimal is a fraction whose denominator is really a power of 10. Now, by, by power of 10, remember what we mean by that. We mean like 10 to the 1, which is a 10 in the denominator, or 10 squared, which is 100 in the denominator, right? 10 times 10 or 10 to the power of 3, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000. Those would all be considered decimal fractions. So 3 tenths is a decimal fraction. And the reason that's a decimal fraction is we can rewrite it as a decimal as 0 0.3, which is really understood to mean the same thing. It really means 3 tenths. 7 eighths is not a decimal fraction. Now we can rewrite it as a decimal and we'll discuss that a little later on in the chapter. Okay, but it's not a decimal fraction because its denominator is not a power of 10. 23 over 100 or 23 hundredths is a decimal fraction because again the denominator is a power of 10. So um, we can rewrite that as 0 decimal 2 3. Right? And that's understood to mean exactly the same thing. So Let's revisit our place chart. Um, if we revisit our place chart, we've been working a lot with thousands and hundreds and, and tens and units or ones. Um, now we can introduce the decimal point, and anything after a decimal point is really a fraction. And we got to watch our terminology here. If I give you a number like this, one, two, three, decimal four, five, six. Okay? Um, the four represents not notice we skip something, we go hundreds, tens, units, there's a decimal point, and then we start with tenths. We don't start with units, that's whatever that would mean. We start with tenths, and then hundredths, and then thousandths. So we would read that as 123 decimal 456, or we could read it as uh, 123 and uh, four tenths, five hundredths, six thousandths. Okay. So, what do we want you to be able to do? Well, firstly, if we give you a decimal like that, you should be able to write it in three different ways. So I would re rewrite this. One way is to say um, four tens, five ones, and six tenths. Oh, let's spell that right. Six tenths. Uh, seven hundredths, and right at the end we got to remember that th, eight thousandths. Okay, often we just, we can write it in a bunch of different ways. Now another way is to use what we call an expanded notation. Four times ten, plus five times one, plus six times one tenth, plus 7 times 100th, plus 8 times 1,000th, like that. Or, we can write it a little different way, 40 plus 5 plus 6 tenths, plus 7 one hundredths, plus 8 thousandths. We'll let that bell finish. Okay, so there's, there's a couple different ways of rewriting that, and basically what we're doing is we're taking apart that number, okay, um, and looking at what each digit represents. So if you're comparing two numbers that are written as decimals, um, what you do is you compare the numbers that have the greatest value first. So here's a typical question. I want you to tell me which symbol we should put in there. In other words, which number is bigger? Well, if we start off in the tenths, or sorry, the tens, both have one ten, so they're equal. And the ones both have two ones, so again they're equal. But when I look at the tenths, this one has no tenths, this one has three tenths. So this number will be the larger number. So um, since that one's larger, remember the alligator eats the larger one, we would put it that way. Okay? So uh, what else do we want you to be able to do? One last thing. We want you to be able to round numbers. Okay, so you got to, first of all, be comfortable with the terminology so you know what decimal place we're looking at. 
Uh, <clears throat> so here's what I said. When you're rounding a number, when we round, determine the digit you wish to round to. Look to the digit to the right. <clears throat> if it's five or more, you add one to the digit. Four or less, you leave the digit. Now, let's start just with a, a number that doesn't seem to have a decimal in it. Now, if it doesn't have a decimal in it, we assume the decimal place is right there, right after um, the last digit. All right, so, and I want to round to the nearest hundred, which means tens, hundreds. I want to round to uh, units, tens, hundreds. I want to round this digit. Now, what I do then is I look to the next digit. I look to this one. Now, since that's a six, that's one more. So I add one to the four, and I would make it three, two, five, and the others become zeros. Okay, so we would say uh, 32,500 is rounded to the nearest hundred. Now, watch the next one. Now, this one's a dec written as a decimal, what would represent a decimal, even though I would argue the first one is also a decimal. But now I want to the nearest hundred, which is tenths, hundredths, this digit. So again, I look to the next one. Okay. Now, what we would say is, well, that one's four, which means it's, it's four or less. We don't add to that one. So we would write this as 67.01. Now, normally you would just replace the others with zero, but with decimals, it doesn't really make sense to put zero, zero. Because we could put as many zeros after as we want. So we usually don't bother. We just say decimal zero, one. <clears throat> now, a mistake that a lot of students make is they look beyond the 4 and say, well, that's a 9, so shouldn't we make the 4 a 5? And then, since that's a 5, and the answer is no. Okay, because really what that means is you have um, four hundreds and nine thousandths, or you could look at it as 49 thousandths. Uh, sorry, no, we're, we're one digit beyond. Try that again. This would be um, four thousandths, my apologies and nine ten thousandths, so that would be 49 ten thousandths, and again, it's below five, so no, 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 we don't do that. All right, what about this one? Round to the nearest thousandths, well, tens, hundreds, thousands, right there. So again, we look to the digit that's beyond it. That one is higher than five, so we add one. Now, when we add one, add one to nine, we got to watch out because suddenly it becomes 10, which means we add 1 to this one too. So it would be 2. Now, in this case, it's important to put the 0 in because um, even though technically it'll disappear on us, um, that's our way of, of representing that I know I need to round to the nearest thousandth, and that thousandth digit should be a 0. So we would put the 0 in in that case, and that's about the only case we would do that. All right, so I think you're ready to start this chapter, so go ahead. Uh, good luck with it.